All right, what's going on everybody? I just want to take a minute, update y'all. Haven't done one of these just straight talking videos in a while. So if you want to see fish catches, this will not be the video. But go ahead and hit that subscribe button because the next few videos will be me straight up whacking some pre-spawn and bedding bass. So anyways, I want to start off this video by letting y'all know this video right here is sponsored by Top Fishing Deals. What Top Fishing Deals is, well, first and foremost, they're my title sponsor for the 2020 Bassmaster Elite Series, which is put on hold right now because of the coronavirus. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But anyways, Top Fishing Deals, basically what they do is their online store, they scour the deep, dark depths of the internet, find all the clearance, all the sale items on every single fishing-related website, stockpile it into one website. You can go to one website and find every single clearance and sale item on the internet right now. It's not just tackle, it's not just rods and reels. They have some boots, they have some kind of fishing clothes, all kinds of stuff like that. Tons of equipment and they got it for the cheapest prices anywhere on the internet. So go check out Top Fishing Deals. But anyways, what y'all came here to talk about is the coronavirus. And that is going to be kind of a bad thing to talk about right now because that is um, putting a halt to a lot of things we wanna do. But I'm gonna start this video off showing y'all my frog rod that I showed in the last video. So got it completely finished now you can see i keep the cork and everything extremely small extremely lightweight have a split grip reel seat wrapped it in blue this is the hook keeper that i want for a frog because sometimes whenever i'm hitting waves and stuff if i have the regular flipping style or drop shot style hook keeper the frog can bounce off so that's the hook keeper i wanted to use for my frog rod this is going to this is literally i think i nailed it this time this is my dead on frog rod done it's going to be my frog rod all year. Only time I'm going to use a different frog rod is I'm going to have two rigged up. And you can see I use this LRV. This is a higher foot than normal uh, starting guide. And the benefit to that is the, the trajectory of the line coming out of the reel, when you have a little bit taller guide, it doesn't put it in such a bind, such a pinch point. And I ran it with number five Fuji's wrapped it in blue. This thing is beautiful, beautiful rod. Anyways. 60 pound eight strand braid on there canine and that is what i use this is the same corrado 70 xg this has been the frog reel i've used for i mean years now but anyways that is the frog rod and reel that i was making in the last video got it finalized <clears throat> i do put on all my rods i put this little orange tip just for accent serves absolutely no purpose but i think it looks really really cool and i see it in my video sometimes flashes and stuff like that so i always put a little bit of like neon orange thread on the tip of every single rod that i build just because i kind of think it looks cool other than that that's it anyways so if you have not heard lake chickamauga for the bassmaster elite series was supposed to have already happened i think today would have been like the fourth day or maybe the day after i don't even know what day it is we've been in quarantine so long about to go crazy but anyways lake eufaula has also been postponed. We do not have dates yet on when these will be made up or what's gonna happen just yet. But I have seen a lot of people on the internet, you know, kind of being skeptical of the decisions these bass tournaments um, organizations are making because they say that bass fishing is an outdoor sport. And that is true whenever you think about just the act of going out there and fishing, you know, catching your fish, putting them in a live well. You know, it's just me and my co-angler or marshal on the boat. But you have to think of it as a lot bigger picture than that. So just take the Elite Series for example. If we're going to a town like Dayton, Tennessee, it's not a huge town to begin with. They're going to take 88 anglers, 88 marshals. We have a full service crew for like a bunch of different brands. That's uh, probably another 50 or 60 people. Staff, you know, cameramen. We've got hundreds of people that we're bringing to a town. So if that town shuts down, the hotels close, the restaurants close, they've got that many people there stranded. Not to mention that if we go there and there's already a shortage on toilet paper everywhere, there's a shortage on groceries at all the local restaurants and stuff. If they put us in these towns, we have to go buy groceries. We got to go buy, you know, all the stuff that we need to operate a huge event like this. So it's really important, you know, that we don't go in to a small town like Dayton and, you know, make a bigger strain on the resources that they have there because we would need a lot of resources to run a tournament that big, and then they need a lot of resources just to survive every day, so they, they don't need any extra hands, you know, taking the stuff off the grocery store shelves right now, and that's what, that's the main reason. It's not about the actual tournament getting any of us sick, but, you know, when you take into account all the people that we're gonna put at a, you know, town somewhere, whether it be you follow or Dayton or wherever it is, you know, that just puts a strain on the local economy 
you know, for right now, not really economy, but the local resources that they have, because it takes a lot of people and a lot of stuff to operate a thing this big. Not to mention that we do have a meeting where all of us are in, in a group, you know, so there is some times where we could come in contact with the virus. But, you know, for the most part, the biggest thing you have to think about is don't think so much about the fishing aspect, about how we wouldn't get sick while fishing, and think about the strain it puts on the community as a whole. And yeah, local tournaments and stuff like that shouldn't be as big of a strain, but even for BFLs and or the open style tournaments, people still travel, they get hotel rooms, and you don't want to have you know a few hundred people like the open series, there's 225 anglers, 225 co-anglers, plus staff, plus service crews. You're talking about like six or 700 people there for that tournament. And then if, if that town, for whatever reason, there's some kind of an order to, you know, shut the restaurants down, you've got that many people stranded, you know, a, away from their home with, you know, no resources. So that's the reason this stuff is happening. It's not because they're scared that something's going to happen while they're actually fishing and getting sick. That is not the main cause of concern. So just want to give a little bit of a different perspective for why they are canceling the tournaments and all this stuff. I mean, they're canceling everything because we don't know what is going to happen. Nobody does. I'm hoping for the best. You know, I really want to go to Ufala. I, I, I want to. I, I want to go back anytime to Chickamauga or Ufala. Whenever we have to go, it's going to be good. Those lakes are full of giant bass. So we go in the middle of the summer. We go in the fall. We go in the winter. We go in the spring. Whenever we go, they're going to put out big weights. So it's just cool to be able to go any time of the year. But anyways, it's raining right now. We're in quarantine. I'm building rods. I melted my swim bait back down. So because I had ripped a bunch of holes in the bottom of it, got it back where I can actually fish this thing again, fixed it. But what I did with this is I met, I heated up a actual old fishing hook with a lighter, stuck it in here until I melted the plastic and squeezed it back together. I had been filling it with super glue and squeezing it together and putting my hook back in that super glue for a while and that just doesn't hold up. So I melted the plastic back down. Now it looks kind of like a mighty bite minnow. But anyways, that's what I'm doing right here. Sun's gonna come out, it's gonna be 80 degrees in a couple days. So sun's gonna be bright i know they're trying to bed right now the pollen's everywhere so hit that subscribe button check back we're going to be smashing them off bed very very soon and he's going to get a little bit of play time too so if you like that video leave a like leave a comment hit that subscribe button another thing i'm thinking about doing i'm thinking about doing a live video so get your q and a's together and leave me a comment if you want to see me and probably miss hunter do a live video because it's something i've been wanting to do for like six or eight months now i just figured i didn't have a big enough following to do that i wouldn't get you know any views on the live deal but if you want to see a live video leave me a comment tell me to do it give it a like and that was hunter's hair hunter's hair i will see y'all in the next video hit that subscribe button we about to start smashing them on